A plug and play UV filter promised to clean up algae, bacteria blooms, and cloudy water. But does it work as good as it says? Hi everyone, it's Connor. Today I wanted to do a review on the Q-Spider internal UV filter. So first, a quick story of why I purchased this. So in the tank behind me, my 65 gallon, I ended up getting a pretty bad bacterial bloom. It came out of nowhere. I do have a recent video showing what happened in the disaster was. I actually lost a few fish, unfortunately. But one of the solutions to a bacterial bloom, especially for a urgent, serious one I had, was a UV filter. And so there were several options, some were inline ones that you had to put on your canister filter, but this one was pretty inexpensive and uh, Amazon was able to ship it by the next day and just looked like plug and play. So as long as the reviews being good, I just went with it. Now, the goal of a UV filter is for water to pass by a UV bulb, which kills any bacteria, algae, or parasites that are suspended in the water column. But real quick, the stats, so it was $50. The size is about three and a half inches for the length, four inches for the width and it's 12 inches high. The cord is 4.6 feet. The flow rate is 210 gallons per hour. And then it's suitable for 40 to 80 gallon tanks. So first, before we get into the actual setup, I just want to show the actual unboxing of the product. So here you'll see me open it up. So what's included is an already pre-assembled filter. This is the full filter, already pre-assembled with the UV bulb installed and everything. Uh, has instructions, has an airline tube, and then has an extra UV bulb that comes with and an extra sponge. There's a sponge in the filter for just normal filtration to catch particles. Now for the instructions, the one thing that is very important, and it says this all over the box and all over the instructions very brightly, but there is material inside the filter around the bulb, and this is the protective going shipping. Now, if you don't remove this, you will break your filter once you run it. So it's very important to make sure you do this. It also recommends, um, or it says you must, is open it up and make sure the UV filter hasn't been damaged or broken during shipping. So this is also very important. You don't want to turn it on with a broken UV bulb. Now for setting it up, after you remove the insert inside of it, you just want to inspect it, make sure nothing is broken in it, and then you kind of just put it back together. And then when you are going to actually run it, you want to submerge it underwater first, make sure you get all the air bubbles out. You can actually have it open and put it back together underwater too and make it even easier. And this is another important step that warns about a lot in the instructions that you can uh, mess up or even break your device if you start it while there's air in the device. And then optionally, you can attach the airline tubing to the top when it flows to the top of the water. And this unit actually also functions as a air pump. Now here you'll see it actually running and for my thoughts on it. So it did solve my problem probably two to three days after installing it on this tank. Um, first the water cleared up real quick, probably in a day, but then the fish um, really uh, stopped having breathing problems even three days after. So it really completely solved the problem pretty quick, which is good because it was an uh, urgent fix that I needed. And so going into the positives, so first, as I said, it solved my issue. So for bacterial blooms, I'll say it's a thumbs up on that. Solved it for me. It's easy to run and clear instructions, at least most of the instructions. But really, besides just removing the material and making sure it's not broken, um, it's pretty much just plug and play. You really don't have to do anything else to it. And it just runs just like that. And the last thing is it's very, very quiet. I actually have it on a tank, my 55 over there, and it's still running. I didn't even turn it off like most equipment for these videos, but you really can't hear it at all. So that's one thing, it's completely underwater, but there's no sound on it. So I really like that about it. Now the negatives is, the first one is it's kind of large, kind of chunky, really depending on what kind of tank you're putting it in, it can be pretty big. So it really depends on what kind of tank. If you have like a nice aquascape tank like this, you probably don't want to leave it in there because it just doesn't look that nice. And that takes a, a big amount of space in the tank. It's a foot high it's gonna come out four inches as well. The next is the cord is pretty short. This is one thing I really don't like is it's honestly too short in my opinion because for equipment, you really wanna run a drip loop. And I am able to do that on the tank I'm putting and having it on now, but you know, I really would like it to be longer. It, uh, you know, I'm just barely uh, able to have the drip loop and really, 
you need to uh, position it in a way that's kind of close to wherever your outlet is. So you really need to, it limits where you can put it to also have it triplet. So it's one thing uh, I'm not a fan of is it just, you know, honestly, if it had one to two feet more, it'd be perfect. Next is, it's kind of confusing, the air pump instructions. It doesn't really go over them too well in the instruction book. There is some pictures and it shows you can have, there's a top little um, air outlet. You can have that above the water. But um, in the instructions, it does say they have the whole filter under the water. So I actually thought you just need the whole thing under the water. And it doesn't really go over what the airline tubing is for. Later, um, doing this review and looking up uh, more details on it and really reading through what it said, I kind of figured it out. But um, really not very clear on that. So you also don't need it though. So it really depends if you want that to also function as an air pump. And lastly with that is the airline tubing that it comes with is pretty short. And so if you do have a tall tank, like a 55, it might reach the top, but it's also gonna be very close. And the filter itself is pretty heavy. So even though it has suction cups, it usually slides down the glass and has to kind of sit at the bottom. So um, I don't feel like the suction cups will keep it against the wall, but they can't really support the weight of it. So that is one uh, other small negative thing. Next is for most of the bad reviews, people have reported it breaking after a few months. So mine has held up fine. I've probably had it for two, maybe, uh, yeah, probably about two months now. I have absolutely no problems with it. Um, maybe bulbs are still running. Um, I think people say you got to replace them every six months or so. But um, yeah, hopefully it keeps running without problems. But that is one thing is a uh, number of people have reported it just breaks after, you know, uh, six months, three months, et cetera. So hopefully it doesn't happen. But that is one thing is uh, you might buy it and, you know, it might not last uh, forever as long as you want. And so to wrap up, that is my thoughts on the Spider UV internal filter. Overall for me, it did the job I needed and it did it very quick. So what I bought it for, it did. And so I'm very happy with that. And so if you have a real bad algae problem or a bacterial boom that you need to solve and you just want a quick solution that it's just almost plug and play, um, I'd say definitely go with this. I'm very happy I bought it. Now, there are some negatives as I went over. The instructions could be more clear on every section. And uh, hopefully it lasts for me, because some people reported it that it didn't uh, last for them. But this is my first time using and learning about UV filters. So if anyone has tried any other ones, uh, I'd love to hear about it and uh, hear other recommendations. I know there's another popular one, the green killing machine, that actually looks smaller and more compact. So I might actually just try it, keep it on this tank, but we'll see. But anyways, I'll close it out here. I have the filter linked below if you're curious to check it out. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see everyone next time.